At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today's guest is Greg Wolf with us. He's an etheric yoga teacher, and he's also the author of the forthcoming book, Awaken Your Inner Healer So That You Can Recover Your Health Fast, The Five Pillars to Fundamental Health. And today we're going to be really chatting with Greg and learning about his journey and how chi and prana really worked to help heal him and bring joy back to his life, but also a secret treasure of yoga and and daily practice. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Christina. Thank you for coming and being with us today. On this hot LA day. <laughs> it is, it is. But you know, mind over a matter, right? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's another example to practice uh, chi practices. I'm just in traffic and uh, I have my own little reminder ticking in my head. Okay, now it's a good time to deep breathe. <laughs> All right. No, definitely. <laughs> So I want to really start out by learning a little bit about your journey, since I mean, I think that that's the basis of your mm. energy into uh, becoming a yoga teacher, but also writing this book, having such a profound change in yourself. So I want to hear where, when it first kind of came about, how, where were you? What did life look like before? What was the catalyst to like, you know, how did you find yoga or whatnot? And take I it like away. I like that question. Thank you. Um, you know, the more I think about it, and I go back and wondering, where did this all start? Um, and I find a lot of people start when they had some um, illness or, or, or accident to recover, um, had my share of that. But God, I really just started questioning a lot of things about life when I was five years old, which I'm kind of surprised about, and my parents were a little bit annoyed when I was asking these questions. Um, and then I think it really blossomed about age 15. I started just reading world religions. Um, a few years later, uh, again, another jump in my awareness came when I took up the practice of Tai Chi and Kung Fu, mm. um, and along with that, Qigong. Okay, and that was when you were 15 or when yeah, you were... Actually, 18. 18. So... Okay, so you, here you are, you're a five-year-old kid, and you're asking your parents these, I'm guessing, philosophical questions yeah. about life. <laughs> oh, Meaning and, of life stuff. <laughs> and, you know, some of that is, is normal, but some of it when it's these more detailed questions and maybe, mm. you know, your parents not knowing those answers themselves or not having asked those questions themselves, maybe a little taken back, and so... I think like many kids that are awake and that are, are open and if their parents aren't in that space to meet them on that energetic plane, they kind of coil back in for a little bit and then you coiled out again at around 15 and started reading world religion books, which isn't normal reading of a 15-year-old, right, teenager? You sort of, yeah. There's a lot of science fiction and fantasy to prep me for that. But <laughs> okay. That's a good intuitive uh, and translation. Yeah. yeah. And I so like then that. at 18, you decided to take it more, you know, tactile. And mm. you, you know, was yeah. it like something down the street from you? Or did somebody tell you about Tai Chi or Qigong? Or like, you know, yeah. how did, you know, you as 18, you know, especially years ago, find that? Well, I would say that um, even at that somewhat young age, uh, I actually did what's now called, uh, I think, life spring or landmark training. Okay. And at that point, it was called Earhart Seminar Training. Mm -hmm. And in that, I made friends. Um, there was um, a man from China who I became really good friends with. Uh, and he was into Tai Chi and Kung Fu. And he said, you know, I do this thing. And I go, what's this? And so I went to learn from him for a while. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, this is interesting, but it's really hard. He did the traditional Chinese style of teaching where you just hold a posture uh, until you're exhausted and falling over. Uh, and I thought, mm, I don't know if I like this. I'm going to look for a more local school. Uh -huh. And then I found one that was very compatible with me. And I just loved it. It just, 
you know, the movement, the feeling of the movement felt so good. And I found that I just continued to do that the rest of my life. And doing the Tai Chi started to develop this sensation and feeling of, you know, another, it's almost like another body inside your mm -hmm. body, this Chi body. Yeah. Got me fascinated with uh, what is this feeling? And of course, my instructor uh, there, the teacher of Kung Fu, could actually demonstrate uh, his Chi. He was very powerful. So he'd give you a little push. His body wouldn't move, but people would literally fly across the room 10 or 20 feet, or wow. someone would be back there catching them. And it was like short of a, a miracle. Yeah. Uh, he would do demonstrations, and 20 guys would try to push him over, and he wouldn't move. So, you know, it was very convincing. <laughs> yeah. You were seeing that, and you're like, wow, this is what sci-fi movies are made of. These are superhero powers. <laughs> Inspiration was very easy to... <laughs> You know, that kind of a thing makes an impression when you're 18. <laughs> yeah. Was there a period of time that you deviated from the path a little bit? Because I know that you mm. say that uh, you found chi and prana to heal you. So, right. you know, like, was there, was there a period of time that maybe there was this separation and you had to come back to it? Or is this healing and more like a, um, just healing some of that family or whatnot? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there were definitely had my share of incidences and accidents and traumas. And um, that was another big stepping point in my life, I guess. You know, I picked up a lot of uh, different meditations, uh, a couple of yoga practices, um, uh, some Kundalini yoga, but it was a, a little variety that was unusual mm -hmm. uh, from the normal, what most people think of as Kundalini yoga, but beneficial in its own way. And um, maybe 15 years ago, 10 or 15, I had uh, some minor operations. Okay. And, uh, and then my boss at work in my corporate job uh, had a really big operation. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I, I'd really like to get back on my feet faster and maybe help my boss. And I started thinking, well, I know a few things about how the body works. And it got me inspired to dig much deeper. Hmm. And then I started building up all this knowledge and I thought, wow, I've got, you know, 50 odd pages of information here on all the different things that can help you heal faster. And of course, some of them were particular types of energy work. Okay. Um, and that's, I suppose, when this structure started to form and my book started to uh, form at that time. Um, and I came up with these different five pillars of uh, you know, the, the f different elements of a, of a human being and, and each one of them are important when you're healing or evolving. Yeah, okay. And so that, and your book's coming out soon, maybe by the time somebody's listening to this, it's already available. Mm. Uh, where do you plan on releasing it, on, on Amazon or? Amazon, yeah, I think Amazon is, is gonna be the big one. Okay. Um, I just have to navigate the <laughs> interface right. and uh, that shouldn't be so bad. Yeah, okay. a couple of weeks, I think. Um, it'll be an awesome book. Awesome. And yeah. it brings in, it also brings in the energetic component. You know, there's, there's structural, biological, psychological, energetic, environmental, you know, these five pillars, they all have an effect on your health. You can address one, but if the other one is a big problem, uh, it's going to pull on the chain. Um, yeah, I was just uh, going to ask you what the five pillars are. You gave it to us, so <laughs> you, you know we're intuitive those? here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> reading each other's mind. Uh, and so, of, of course, because everything's a symbiotic, right? You know, yeah. so if the environment's yeah. messed up, even if you you have your physical really in alignment, or maybe the other four, but you keep on going into a toxic environment, it's probably not going to be the best suited, right? It's going to yeah. continue to pull you out of alignment in some of those other ones. Absolutely, and. These days, the toxins are more and more invisible. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi and cell phone, 5G, um, EMF from, you know, dirty electricity. Um, and a lot of, you know, the old one that most people are also unaware of is geopathic stress. Mm. And you could be sleeping in your bed underneath a, a, a line, a ley line of yeah. negative, and, and the earth has positive and negative, and that's the way it's built. But if you don't know it, then you can do all these other things, and every night you're sleeping on this negative ley line, yeah. thinking, why am I not healing? 
Is there a way that people can find where the ley lines are? Is there like some kind of contraption oh, or something? Yeah. I mean, that's because yeah, yeah. you know, I'm sure that's the curiosity. I mean, if it went in on my head, well, how do I know? You know, like, you know, you mm -hmm. pull a compass and, you know, in feng shui, it's like the different positions of the head, right? You yeah. know, like, yeah. shouldn't it? East, it, west. Yeah. North. And it's like saying, you know, you should always, you shouldn't have your head facing north, your toes facing south where it drains you. Your head should face south with your toes north. So it like energizes you. But, you know, and different beliefs have different systems. But I know. And the east, east and north generally are the ones that are recommended. Yeah. Either when it's facing the sun or the north pole. Yeah. It, it, it depends on what, on, on what spiritual, you know. And some things are experiential as well. Yeah. So and it's, I mean, it. you can try it around. But these ley line things <laughs> are, are interesting to me. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, it's called a dowser. So uh, this is what they used to use also to find water. Mm -hmm. um, 100 years ago or 200 or more, we didn't have today's technology. And even still, it's you know, not that accurate, but it's amazing how someone can do that. They've got these two copper rods mm -hmm. and they just walk around and, and the rods, they either come together, they separate depending on these lines or what they're looking for and people tune into it. So someone develops that skill like anything, like developing your sensitivity of the chi. Mm, yeah, and they can do and, that. And dowsing rods are used in different uh, energy practices, or even in for divination of yes and no answers, or whether people's chakras are open. But yeah, interesting, people can use old uh, hanger rods. That's right. Yeah, you know, so it's like copper. if you have if you have those metal hanging rods in your closet, I mean, it's which most people, you know, most stores only sell the plastic ones now, but they're still there and they still exist. And if you can have those, you can bend them and you can kind of hold it and you can kind of see whether they cross or they open, you know. Go up into the attic, check your antique hanging rods and get to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you just play with it, I'm, you can YouTube another video and you can find out. But I'm, I'm, my guess would I'll be the a best. workshop. <laughs> or you, uh, you, at your workshop. There you go. So opening, what I would presume, would be the best way if it's open or no. It, it depends on what you're looking for. Okay. And open means one thing, closed means another. Um, you might be wanting water or finding out where it's negative, where it's positive. Mm -hmm. And these will both respond to that and you can start to map out That's your cool. area. That's cool. That's awesome. And so these little tips and tricks, and you kind of took all these teachings that you're now presenting into your book. Yeah. But for a while, you've been doing also these workshops that, mm. you know, mm. and kind of in co incorporating a lot of these teachings. It's you and your wife do them together, right? And, um, you know, so you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um not wife, but very close partner. Oh, very close partner. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so that's, a, that's an interesting story. I was just milling over that the other day. You know, this, how did this workshop take birth? And it was a curious thing that, you know, the universe f happens and we flow and surprises and just things turn over. You think one situation might be negative, but, you know... I, I'm learning to not judge things. So mm -hmm. what had been happening in the last, um, much more so in the last five years, five or 10 years, um, just accumulating different practices. I, I'm just very fascinated by how, you know, one practice like Kundalini Yoga will affect the body. Um, Qigong and Tai Chi will affect the energy in a different way. Breath work will affect it another way. Mm -hmm. And of course it goes on. And I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it was just like, you know, when you do things out of interest, the, the, it's like a soul calling. Yeah. <clears throat> and at one time, I was with some, a group of new friends, uh, a couple of you know, older friends, new friends, and we had an evening together, and it was just kind of chit-chat, and it was okay, and I, I left that evening thinking, you know, it, it could have been much more interesting. Hmm. And, and I have things that I could bring to these friends uh, to show them that could be a lot of fun. And, and I could be even more fun if it was a partnered exercise because uh, a lot of things I've noticed where, you know, I would start something or someone else is, you know, you, you have a little enthusiasm, but unless you're really driven, um, you know, maintaining that momentum is not easy. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a partner, who's interested, in other words, it's like going to a class. Yeah. And we people always prefer to come to a class because they have that group support. 
So a partner support also, again, makes it another level interesting because you're not just doing, you know, some of the things have to be by yourself, but others, it's a lot more fun interacting. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the masculine feminine polarity uh, keeps life interesting. Yeah. So I was writing up this list of activities thinking, well, this would, you know, what if we try some of these things next time we get together? And uh, it just started flowing. You know, it's like Shakespeare said, it's the muse. You just start writing like poetry or something and there's this outpouring and all of the inf information and practices I'd been doing, um, it was like I have something to give. Mm. And it felt so good. Um, and I came up with this list and I looked at it and I thought, wow, this, this looks like a lot of fun. I'd never considered sequencing everything like that before. And I kind of, you know, played with it. I brought it to my friends. Uh, we did this a couple of times, and it's like, wow, Greg, <laughs> it feels awesome. Oh, that's so cool. So it wasn't <laughs> even like, you know, a lot of times people think about these things and, you know, I haven't had chops for almost 13 years. You know, people think about these things and they're, they do it from, okay, this is, this is a workshop or this is a training and, you know, they're doing it for this, like a teaching, goal yeah, a goal in mind Develop, and, and, yeah. you know, whether to give this knowledge to somebody or, you know, to bring people together and sometimes some revenue related or whatnot. But yours was just, you know, hey, we're sitting around, we're chatting with all these new That's people. It. And I, I'm guessing that some of that conversation, you know, they were intrigued by some of the things that you knew and yeah. some knowledge that you were sharing or deciphering out over. And, and you walked away and you were like, wow, okay, that this could have been, that we had a good time. This could have been more fun or more engaging or a deeper connection, which I think yeah. often happens exactly. with a lot of people when you have, when, when you connect deeper with yourself, you see depth in others. Right. And the thing that True. doesn't resonate is artificial or lightness. Right. So you want to kind of like, even if it's new people, you want to build that depth with them. Right. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Yeah. And instead of, I mean, everyone's used to conversation, which is great. It's essential and, and it connects us in our, in our mind and emotion. Um, and what I found is that there's another way to connect energetically and just doing things together and people can feel how they connect because there's this six foot radius, for instance, mm -hmm. that the heart chakra extends out. And so when you're with someone and you feel comfortable, you start relaxing, the chakras start to synchronize. Most people are unaware of that. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't trained, they haven't become sensitive, but it's a little bit of an unconscious thing. Like with some people, you'll notice yeah. you just, hey, that feel good about this person. I want to hang out with them. Yeah. And there the heart chakra is resonating comfortably. And as you get closer, so what I do, what I learned from this sequence of practices, um, that because a lot of people have no familiarity with any of this. Mm -hmm. So I thought about, well, you know, the first thing is that people probably need to be able to relax yeah. and clear out the clutter. So you know, I have a couple of uh, techniques to do that. You know, coming off the street, the traffic, LA traffic again. <laughs> yeah. Um, how to like let that go completely, not just mentally, not a meditation, but helping each other do it, which is more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then employing a couple of other techniques to pump up the energy. So we've, we've flushed it out, we've cleaned out the, the garbage, and now we pump it up, we flood ourselves with powerful life force, chi, prana, um, call it what you want to, different names, same thing. Hmm. And so then people are starting to get activated. They're starting to feel like, whew, I'm, I'm you know, coming yeah. to life. I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling younger. It's like, I want to do something. Yeah. And there's a lot of things we can do with it. Um, but what, again, took it to the next final level to make it even more interesting is how about now that everyone is charged up, Let's see if we can develop a little sensitivity. You know, mm. let's, let's, you know, what can you feel on your hands? What can you feel on someone else's chakras? And extend your senses that way. Uh, and surprisingly, a lot of people started noticing uh, things in their hands. There's, you know, there's levels of, of uh, energy outside of the physical mm -hmm. body where it gets a little spongy. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just 
press that little button, the red one, you know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. So you can take people through this experience where it's not, you know, there's different techniques um, that are done to really clear somebody's energy, uh, connect with their own energy, and then connect with others. Yeah. So it's like this, yeah. this whole exactly. workshop. Um, and they walk out of there with a greater awareness of their self and others and how energy even works. And so, I mean, that's phenomenal. Because as you said, a lot of people don't have that experience. And even the people that do, sometimes uh, learning different skill sets or different tools that can maybe get you there in different ways. Because yes. I think it's, a, you know, it's important to note back to what you were saying before about how there's all of these different modalities that are out there, right? So I think oftentimes people get overwhelmed, maybe even some people that listen to my podcast, 200 some episodes or whatnot, not, and all these even different, here. <laughs> yeah, all these different practitioners them. and different people and, you know, like, um, and, you know, there's a subtlety of difference. And yeah. like when you at first got introduced to traditional Kung Fu and, right. uh, and from, from a Chinese lineage and mm -hmm, that that mm -hmm. it was a little bit didn't resonate with you fully and said, okay. The discipline this, was strict for the, the Western the, mind. This <laughs> this resonates with me, but maybe there's a different way that this experience can get integrated or a yeah. different way of teaching, right? You yeah. know, some people yeah. are very visual learners. Some people are very, you know, and so there's different types of, and people are getting that now with schools and having all yeah. these different types of schools, uh, Montessori schools or charter mm. schools and stuff so like that. So nice to see it. Um, but, you know, so you went and you dived in something different and you said, okay, wow, this, this one resonates more with me and you were able to grab it. But that's kind of like these these modalities, whether they're breath work, whether they're they're Kundalini yoga, whether they're Vinasa flow, whether it's you know Tai Chi, Qigong, whatever it may be, they all have a different way of connecting. And I love how you said the energy can feel different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's important to note and that you take what works for you. And sometimes what works for you works for you right now. And something different Excellent might work points. for you in a few months or weeks yeah. or years down the line, right? Yeah. I like how you said that. That's so true. And people might respond really well to one thing or the other. And that's why I love to show them. I, I feel like, wow, I, this is actually the first time... You know, people talk about soul purpose mm. and, you know, how do you find your purpose in life? I think it's always changing. Just it's like this little stream is like the next thing. And, and what came to me is when I created this special workshop, I, I mean, it's its own, it's its own yoga practice. Um, I'm yeah. calling it etheric yoga because I've never seen anything like it. And, and it just feels so wonderful to be able to offer that to humanity. Um, and how something that people can then feel in themselves and develop in themselves um, and take it, you know, they might, after this workshop, they might come to me and say, you know, Greg, I'd really love to learn more about Qigong or the, or the other different connection practices mm -hmm. or, um, well, sometimes they need healing and that's another story, but yeah, <laughs> can help with that too. That's awesome. So it's really giving people that sampling and seeing, you know, like, let, let me give you this introduction to this culinary or energetic sensation, mm, right? A banquet of practices. <laughs> a banquet of practices that you can choose to dive in deeper yeah. with any one of them or a number of them yeah. that resonate. And it's not, just, it's not just an introduction to the practices, which is great, but... There is actually something in the sequence, and I'm always learning more and refining it, and I'm noticing the effects, you know, are, are stronger yeah. after every revision. It's, it's a growing dynamic practice. It's yeah. still uh, evolving. So the sequence, just like the sequence of postures that you might go through right. a set in yoga, Techniques. they, mm -hmm. they all Correct. build upon each other to open up different layers. So at the end, exactly. you can do the pigeon. <laughs> so well said. Yes. <laughs> and it feels awesome. <laughs> or, you know, whatever. <laughs> or they pass out. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I haven't had that yet, but um, it does seem like at the end of these uh, sessions, so people, you know, it's a partnered workshop. Sometimes someone 
comes with their own partner and they have a lovely deepening experience in that mm-hmm. relationship. Or they come as a single person and they meet somebody new, um, which they actually then can connect with in this energetic sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, surprising how many people are hanging around afterwards, chatting and exchanging <laughs> details. And I love it, you know, it's a yeah. form of, you know, getting to know and building community. Yeah, on uh, such, a, such a deeper level. And people need community now, right? And they want to connect and, you know, though there's that we're doing life differently. And I think the effects of the pandemic has changed mm. how social culture has been, you know, so it's there's isolating. Yeah, it's isolating. And even when there is this connection, there's this distance within that connection. And, you know, it's kind of part mindset and part physical, but you, yes. it seems that you're breaking yeah, through yeah. with that. But there's a craving, I notice, that people want community back again. They want to feel like they can relate. They want to have their tribe, and but they're not, right? And then, you know, not getting into the political mindset, but there's just also this polarization that's happening. I was just thinking about that as well. The, I don't know. It seems to be pushed on us to get divisive you know there's mm-hmm. the left and the right the pro and the con and the on and the and the not and yeah and it's so much division of this massive <laughs> that well and the reason why i bring it up is the point of separation and seclusion and isolation exactly. again is that people are finding it hard to relate to family members and friends that they've had for you know, years, decades in their life and that what they thought was their close tribe because of one or two maybe exaggerated opinions mm-hmm. brainwashed by co- yeah. what a society to polarize, right? Yeah. Yeah. Create <laughs> such discord that these people are feeling lost. They're feeling like, well, I once had a tribe, but now I can't even connect because this person only talks about X, Y, and Z. And our They're in the other different. camp. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what camp? It's, it's all abstract. And, I mean, we're all in the human camp. Mm, what happened to that? Exactly. And, you know, like, I've never, never experienced somebody, so many people so opinionated on politics before when none of them are in politics. Right. Yeah, what does it benefit? <laughs> you so, know, like, you know what I mean, right? Oh you know, my God. we say that. If, it comes to the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and regardless of beliefs and regardless of opinions, it's just that outward divide that is occurring that is causing for something like this to have a more meaning because there's there's a need we're factual beings by nature yeah, yeah, you know yeah we want to be around people like that we heart want- chakra extends for a reason that's not political <laughs> that's just the way we're built yeah you know we've got seven levels of bodies and mm-hmm. even this body you know we call it physical but it's just the densest level of energy yeah. Uh, it's just another energy body where we are basically, humans are composed of very complex patterns of energy. Mm-hmm. And uh, when one can address that more directly, we start to connect with what we really are. You know, the who thing gets a little mental, but if you connect with what we are and then play with that, pump it up. The chi is, is your life force. It's, mm-hmm. it's your vitality. It provides your joy. Uh, it, allow, it empowers you to go into your life with enthusiasm and express. So I love that, uh, the what so we are instead of the who we are. Right? Yeah. No, it's a really good. Especially since the who oftentimes <laughs> changes, you know, yes. and changes rapidly. I think, you know, people identify and say, I'm this or I'm this profession or I'm, I'm mm, this, you I know. I am. It's the know. I am part. Then they're, they're, they're putting themselves in a box. Yeah. I am this little ID when in fact, if you know, Eckhart Tolle said it the best, if you look inside yourself and you say, who am I or what am I? All you get is silence, vastness and emptiness, space. Yeah, possibility and expansion. Mm. And then that what can form into many different forms, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was a that was little thing I discovered after doing these practices for some years, Mm -hmm. and again, different practices as well, um, they complement each other, Uh, is I found this, it was like that little treasure uh, at the end of the practice, like this this is the bonus you get after doing this, like the little secret Mm -hmm. knowledge that comes. And that is that feeling 
of what I am. And when I can really tune into that, the feeling is I am the capacity for experience. Mm. What is that? I can't nail that to anything. I am the capacity for experience. I love that. And, and that do, capacity for experience can be really whatever you make of it. And you, then your experience happens. I am the screen upon which the, the movie plays. Mm. And when I can tune into that. So at the, you know, doing these practices, it, it focuses on the energy part. So, you know, we're very, very mental and everything's up here in the mind. And in Qigong, uh, in, the, in the energy uh, practices, they teach you that, you know, the fire should be down below in your belly. Um, that mm -hmm. is your, your source of power and your chi. And in the West, the fire is way up here. We're super active in this chakra. Yeah. And this gets cold because we haven't developed it. So it's the opposite. It's turned around and then people wonder why they get sick and they don't feel well and they're not happy. Yeah. Um, their energy is out of balance. Yeah. So doing these practices, you know, I don't do a lot of speaking. The workshop, the practice is not like you have to understand something or learn concepts. It's just let's do this next thing and then do the next thing. Mm. And it progressively looping into a more powerful, energized uh, place. Oh, that's so cool. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's coming up. <laughs> yes, it is. And how, how, um, it's coming up. We will say check the dates below because hopefully we'll have it uh, pretty regularly. You know, maybe that would be at least lovely. once a quarter. Maybe we end up having yeah. it once a month or we'll see what you demand. But depending on when you're listening to this, you know, just check down below for the link of the most upcoming class, you know. Mm, very exciting. I think we've got one in a in about a month's time. Something yes, like. yes. But, you know, just for evergreen. Just sake. figuring out, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and then in this, so pretty much you're looking at the etheric body, the energetic body. Correct. And you've taken and you've allowed some of these physical disciplines that, you know, maybe part yoga, part breath work, part this, part that, to really start to activate and, and, and bring people into that. Mm. Now, what I like about what you were saying is that you said that there's not a lot of talking and instruction, right? That's interesting. Yeah. And it actually, I picked up on that when you, when you said about uh, the group of friends and saying that, you know, we had a lot of conversation, but, you know, we, you don't, there's other ways to connect besides conversation. And when you, it, so I had a feeling that you were designing something that wasn't too, uh, you know, in the, in the traditional teaching model mm -hmm. that we would know, but in the very much, let's feel it, let's experience it, let's do it. So it's so cool. Cause so mm -hmm. much of any time you go to a class, what do you expect? You sit down and expect lecture. somebody <laughs> to talk to you and talk at you and you take notes or whatnot. And then there might be sprinkled in an exercise here or there. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just a little sprinkled in exercise and that's it. I noticed that being a workshop junkie myself, um, it was frustrating. Yeah. And so having observed that and, and feeling into myself what feels more comfortable help me design it in a way which um you know turns that around as well and it works i mean i i've i just have to record some testimonials but a lot of people loved it you know i wish i captured that when they were talking to me better yeah but you were in the moment yes that's it yeah yeah i mean that's the most important thing at the end of the day oh that's cool and um if you want to share a little bit about you know i i know that one of the things that we were going to talk about is that there's a secret treasure of yoga. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I kind of let that slip a bit earlier. Oh, okay. With, um, because what happens after doing these practices, after feeling the chi flow, you know, you're calming down this, this chatter, one starts to just feel that, you know, the life force naturally takes over and the joy, there is like this, unspoken there's unreasonable there's there's no rational reason people just feel joy and they're in they're in the moment and they're kind of expanding it's like their identity of what they are expands mm. and they naturally connect into that 
being, beingness. Mm. Um, and it's like that hidden blessing. Once you've gone through it and you, you've done the work, Beautiful. which in this case is more like play, I'd say. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I know that you do also one-on-one services as well, right? And mm-hmm. so you do energy healing. Correct. You can work with people, uh, you know, so if anybody is resonating, do you do things that over uh, remote, over like Zoom and things too, or do you tend to do just in person? I can um, because of my my current level and, and what resonates with me. It, it just works so much better in person. Mm-hmm. Um I'm someone who is very much more in touch with the etheric energy, which, yes, it can stretch over space and even time. Um, and I'm aware of that, and I've had some experiences of that. Um, but it's just so much more effective uh, because I can employ different techniques, uh, yeah. and, and it's more powerful. Like I said, the, you know, the, the distance of the, of the different chakras radiating, so I employ maybe a half, half a dozen different modalities mm-hmm. in a healing because again, people may or may not respond to one particular thing. Um, okay. And I, and, so if yeah. you're listening, it's gonna be when you're visiting <laughs> LA that you would meet mm. with Greg. But, Locals and, only, sorry. <laughs> you know, but doesn't mean that you can't get his book and uh, allow yourself to learn those principles and do some of those exercises on mm. your own, in your own time, in your own space, no matter where you're at in the USA or the world. You know, so know that there is still expansion and more for you. Where can people find you? So I have uh, a few different contacts and I am expanding this. It's evolving as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have uh, an Instagram page. Um, the Facebook page for this is in development. So I'm Okay. Not well, let's going look to, at where we find you, you on Instagram. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, you know, contacting me directly that way is uh, Greg Cosmic Fool. Okay. <laughs> Greg dot Cosmic dot Fool. Okay. And um, that's probably, a, you know, one easy way everyone's, okay. not everyone, but if you're on Instagram, you can do that. Perfect. Traditional email is also possible, I guess. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so we'll put that contact information down below as well as Greg's email um, so we can update it if he changes with a new website and things like that in the future. Uh, I don't know. It's been an amazing conversation. Thank you. Is there it's anything else that you'd like to share with anybody? I Here's could share question. four quick tips okay. to improving your chi. <clears throat> there we life. go. For those people that aren't in LA, we got hey, the tips are, for you now. <laughs> these are little gems of wisdom. It's, they're simple, but very powerful. I mean, we're talking about life force. I like to give a little something, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and by the way, I'm going to come out with a little introductory video. I'm, I'm in the process of recording that to okay. have a little like workshop taster, trying to get okay. that thing on YouTube. So Perfect. look out for that. Maybe you can DM me for that. Um, the first one, you may have heard this people in the spiritual um, arena, I've heard eat mindfully. Mindfulness, what is that? So eat mindfully. That means when you're taking food into your body, that's energy. That's being converted into prana mm-hmm. and life force. So if you're working or you're driving <laughs> or stressed out while you're eating, your, your food is taking on that mm-hmm. qu- quality. So the best way to do it is to enjoy it. It's very simple. Enjoy your food. Be thankful for it. Enjoy it and thank every bite. And that's really, you know, it's not thinking about it like mindfulness isn't a complicated thing. The other one is breathing. Um, You get stressed, we all forget. It's like we're into this shallow breathing. Um, And if you can catch yourself, it's really a a thing you remind yourself in traffic or whatever, you get nervous, just feel you all the way up into your chest and it's better through your nose. People do a lot of mouth breathing. That's going to energize your brain. So most people it's better in their nose. Traditional uh, practices do that. A couple other things. Your emotional state is so connected to your prana, your chi. So if your emotions go negative, you're unhappy about something, you're angry, whatever, you know, the negative emotions of guilty, um, you need to switch that uh, as quickly as possible because that's going to pull your energy down. So whatever it takes to do it, maybe it's, it's playing some music, watching a comedy, um, doing some movement, mm. um, you know, 
talking to a friend, but be careful that you don't want to complain. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one is um, laughter. I'm sorry, uh, your image. We did the laughter. Yeah, what's in your mind? What are you focusing on? Mm -hmm. So people tend to imagine things. Now, you can either imagine things you don't want or imagine things you do want. It seems really basic, but mm -hmm. again, we need to pay attention to that. Are you creating the future that you want? Are you imagining the things that you want to come to you? Like, I'm imagining a great interview, and it is. <laughs> it's, you know what, fantastic. Um, okay, one final thing. Take up some chi development practice. Okay. Uh, you knew I was going to say that. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So those, those four things, just to recap, are practicing mindfulness, especially while you're eating, yeah. you know, taking a moment to be present where you're at, take it in in a calm space, enjoy your food, nourish those bites, that intention. The second one is Breathe. allowing yourself to... Um, to breathing, 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 you know, so if you feel yourself at any moment, you can shift by breathing deeply. Third is going to be about breaking and shifting your state. So if you find yourself in a low mood, is there something that can get you out of it? You know, sometimes, you know, like Greg was saying, music, movement, shaking, comedy, whatever it is that works for you, you know it, you know yourself. And, you know, the fourth one being intention, you know, intention and where that intention goes, Clear that image. energy. What oh, want. so what do you want? Or are you focusing on the problems that you're anticipating happening? Or do you want to focus on the good things happening, right? And uh, Seems simple. See, it seems simple, but life is simple. We make it complicated. And then the, the fifth thing that Greg's leaving everybody with is build that chi up. Whether that's through one of those different practices that he mentioned. Um, I think there's going to be some great exercises in this book, so look out for it. Uh, thank you so much for joining it's been a pleasure. And until next time, please, everybody, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know what I'm going to say. You better like and comment down there so other people can start to find our videos because our YouTube needs help. You know it. You see the view count. We need more. So please, there. If you're listening to this on one of the audio platforms as a, as a podcast, we highly recommend do come and check us out, see us in person. We have short clips of this as well as long, um, the whole interview, and you can watch us a bitch share them share them on your social media do what you can with it spread the word so we can continue to bring you some informational content that's going to help you transform your life thank you and until next time bye thanks for joining us if you enjoyed this conversation please like it subscribe and share it with your friends if you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.